Red, Chapter 2, Mr. Red. The first thing I noticed about the guy is that he's tall. Taller than even Jay, who stands at a respectable 6'3". The second thing is he's built, with broad shoulders and large muscles under a taut gray shirt. He's bent over the box of buttons we keep by the door for our guests. Since our customers are all at some sort of celebrity level, we're aware of how much weight their names can carry, so we give them buttons by which we can refer them. I always thought this was pretty dumb. What if two people choose the same color button, or we don't have enough for our customers? Jay just shrugged it off and said that the button system would work despite the questions and possible complications. He wasn't wrong either. We never had enough customers for it not to work, much to his chagrin. I watch with interest which button the guy is going to choose. Even though I'm not a massive fan of the button system, I find it interesting to see what colors our customer chooses. I like to guess why they choose the color. Whether it's a favorite color, it was the first one in the box they saw, they like the shade, or the meaning behind the color. The last guess has always been my favorite to mull over. Like words, colors can have many meanings. As one of my old friends, an up-and-coming artist, always told me, yellow is the color that can be a warning, a sign of happiness, even a call to the feeling of being weak or afraid. Blue is the color of sadness, openness, and being calm. The guy finally stands straight with a bright red button attached to his shirt with the bar's name on it. Red. That is definitely the color I would have chosen for this man. He practically exudes red into the room. Well, Mr. Red, feel free to sit wherever. If you want, Ro here can bring you our menu. We have a mean selection of burgers and cocktails. The minute Jay says my nickname, a pair of stunning deep blue eyes meet my brown ones. There's a spark of curiosity in them. The same spark that must be in my own. Our gaze locking pulls me straight from my thoughts and back to reality. The reality where I must have been staring at the sky for the past five minutes. Oh, shit. I give Mr. Red the best smile I can muster in this awkward moment. At least it's very awkward to me. Despite my best attempts to swallow it down, my cheeks slowly burn in embarrassment. Sounds great. Mr. Red gives me back a genuine smile, all plump lips and perfect white teeth. Geez, this guy is movie star hot. I don't recognize him, so I can only guess he's new to the industry. Hollywood is going to cling to him like a pride of lions to their prey. Mr. Red turns and chooses a table in the far back of the bar, which I find a little odd. Usually when the bar is empty, people sit here to watch Jay mix their drinks and talk. Maybe the guy is shy or private, but that wouldn't fit in with how he carried himself, like he knew how to hold attention in a room. Or the way he looked Jay me right in the eyes when he spoke. You know, it's pretty rude to stare. Jay snickers next to my ear and I nearly jump from my seat. Shut the fuck up! I quickly hiss while ducking my head as if that would force my voice to be quieter. I wasn't staring, asshole. I was trying to figure out if I knew him from somewhere. Jay's face tells me he knows I'm spinning bullshit again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you know I can't say anything even if I wanted to. So are you going to give the poor guy's menu or what? Jay smirks and hands me one of the little laminated menus. I huff at him. Another one of our rules for the bar. If one knows or recognizes the celebrities we're serving, we can't tell the other. It would be bad if one of us ended up starstruck, let alone two of us. I don't know, Jay. I'm leaning toward the what option, which would consist of me shoving this thing up your ass. I threateningly wave the menu in front of him. Jay quietly laughs and I could swear I hear a small sort of laughter from Mr. Red is. Just go do your job, Ro. Jay nods towards Mr. Red before wiping down the counter. I find myself mocking him under my breath as I turn around and walk to Mr. Red's table. Jay only laughs behind me. Hello, sir. I'm Ro, and I'll be your waitress tonight. Here's our menu. I left my voice just enough to sound customer service friendly as I placed down his menu. The striking blues look at me again with amusement in them. Thank you, and thanks for not shoving this in your boss's ass first. Mr. Red chuckles, and once more, heat blossoms across my face. Oh my god, you heard that? I murmured, the customer service professional tone entirely gone. Kinda hard not to. This place is pretty quiet. Not that I'm complaining. Mr. Red shrugs and breaks our gaze to look at the bar. I do as well, only seeing empty tables, empty dance floors, and windows covered in pitch black opaque curtains. The bar's logo shown on both sides. The quiet is both a blessing and a curse. I found that out through the last excruciating year. Yeah. Mr. Red's tone softens just enough as though he's also struggled with the just a position for a long time. He goes silent for a minute and his eyes grow distant in thought. After another moment, the awkward feeling comes back. I clear my throat to catch Mr. Red's attention. Do you have a drink in mind, or should I come back later? He blinks a couple times before looking at me. His gaze is turning sheepish. Ah, uh, right. I'll have... He plucks the menu from the table with two large fingers. Christ, is there anything on the man that isn't big? I catch myself just as my eyes wander a little lower. No, absolutely not. Don't even dare start to wonder about what's going on there with your customer row. I think I'll have the grapefruit tequila slammer and the blackout bacon burger. He hands it back the menu, and I raise a brow at him. You like grapefruit? My nose wrinkles just thinking about the bitter fruit. 
yeah, I like things a little sour, and they're good for you. Is it still good for you if it's mixed with alcohol? Touché, but I still like grapefruit. Mr. Red laughs, the deep rumble sending an odd warmth to my chest. It must be because he has a nice laugh. If you like things a little sour, you'll like Rohesia. She's a little sour and then some, Jake calls, startling us both. The blush that's already been ever present on my cheeks works its way down to my chest. Please ignore my friend. He's an idiot. I yell back to him. I can't believe his audacity. He better not be thinking of trying to start something between this guy and me. Mr. Red chuckles and shakes his head. You two fight like an old married couple. The face I make is even more scrunched than when he ordered grapefruit. Married to Jay? Sir, please don't try and make me lose my lunch today. Sorry, sorry, I won't. Mr. Red shakes his head, clearly amused at my distaste at the thought of ever being romantically involved with Jay. But there's something else in his eyes again. Longing? I can't quite tell where to place it. All right then, since you'll ensure I keep my lunch in my stomach, I'll start on your dinner. I head back behind the bar, putting on a hairnet. Jay, what the fuck? I whisper as soon as he's in earshot. Were you trying to embarrass me in front of our customer? Are you attracted to that guy? Jay asks and said. Excuse me? I quickly lower my voice back down before Mr. Red hears. Jay, you should know better than that by now. You know I swore off dating men for a while after Dante. Even then, look at that guy. He's destined for the big screen with those looks. For supermodels or other actresses. Not a waitress. One, you mean an upcoming scriptwriter. Don't put yourself, your talent, or your looks down again. You know I don't take kindly to that shit, Ro. Jay says this in a way that reminds me of a parent scolding a child. I avoid rolling my eyes so the lecture doesn't continue. Two, this is the first time I've seen you blush in a long time, and we've had attracted guys in this bar before. Believe me, I know. I fucked up with a couple of them. If you're interested in this guy, why not talk to him? See if you can get him to keep coming back to see you. We could use the business. Drop it, Jay. I shake my head as I pull on the cooking gloves. It's not gonna happen. Also, he wants a great flute tequila slammer. I want you to find happiness again, Ro, whether it's with or without a guy. I know, and I will, partially, again, when the shift is over. Jay and I share grim smiles at my poor attempt at a joke. I head back to our tiny kitchen to make Mr. Red his order th without another word. A few minutes and a minor grease burn later, Mr. Red had his burger and I'm nursing a strawberry daiquiri from behind the bar. You shouldn't be drinking on the job, Ro. Jay rolls his eyes as he comes back from wiping the tables. Take it for my paycheck. I shrug, swirling the red liquid in the margarita glass. After that little interaction with Mr. Red, I needed something to calm down. I don't understand how he had that effect on me. Sure, he's attractive, and he seems witty and observant. His eyes are a fantastic azure blue, like the ocean, and holding depths to him that I can't help wanting to know more. He's just so... Oh my god, I need to stop thinking of this guy. I tip back my glass, nearly emptying it in one go. This won't get me buzzed, but I can feel the edge slowly chipping away. It's not the alcohol I'm worried about. I don't want you getting buzzed and scaring off our one customer we have tonight, Jay murmurs, setting me aside glare. Calm down, I'm just having one. I shove the glass with the other dirty dishes. Good. Why don't you go check up on Mr. Red over there? Jay thumbs over in his direction, and while you're at it, ask him how he heard about us. All right. Before I head over, I stop and check my reflection in the glass case that holds all the expensive stuff. I smooth and retighten my ponytail before turning back toward Jay. He smirks at me, and I immediately glare, not liking the look in his eyes one bit. What? Nothing. Go do your job. Jay waves me off with a big grin. Whatever. I roll my eyes and head back to Mr. Red. My eyes are glued to the floor so I don't risk looking at him again and getting that weird flustered feeling. How's everything so far? I look up only to stop as both our eyes widen. His cheeks are stuffed so full he practically looks like a chipmunk. Small spurts of laughter stink back my lips despite my hardest attempt not to laugh. I apologize if I came over at a bad time, but I'm guessing the food is good, as through the small bursts of giggles. Mr. Red swallows and a pink color floods his cheeks. He sheepishly smiles at me and I swear I nearly feel the need to swoon. Yeah, it's great. My compliments to the chef. Mr. Red places down his burger and clears his throat, the slight bush still on his face. Thank you. I force my laughter to stop, clearing my throat as well. So how did you hear about the bar? From a co-worker of mine. She said her friend owned it and that there was good food. Do you mind if I ask her name? My brows knit as I try to think of Jay's other friends. He and I used to share a close-knit friend group and neither of us talked to people outside of it. Kelsey Alderman. Do you know her? Mr. Red raises a brow at me. Kelsey? Goodness, I haven't heard that name in a while. The last time I saw her, she was excited about the role she had landed. That was a long time ago. Yeah, she's an old friend of mine and Jay's. How is she? We haven't heard from her in a while. I can't help my curiosity. I miss her. But I doubt all she'll want to hear from me again after dodging your calls for months. She's doing good. We just got back from working on a project in northern Canada. So you'll probably hear from her soon. Mr. Red shrugs. Hopefully. 
Despite knowing that I won't hear from her, I plaster on a smile. If Mr. Red is working on the same project as her, he must already be in the industry. Good for him. With his looks, he'll definitely make it far. So if you know Kelsey, does that mean you're also in the business? Or is this bar a full-time gig? Mr. Red asks. I take a moment to mull over my answer. A year ago, I would have said yes, or that I was going to be. At that time, I was still submitting my scripts to my agent, when I still had the motivation to even write in the first place. I used to be. That's the only way I can think to describe my situation. I used to create scripts, but I haven't in a long time. If you don't mind me asking, how come? He motioned to the chair across from him with a slight grin. I hesitate for a moment, glancing back at Jay, who's sending me a big smile and an encouraging nod. I take a breath and sit down across from him, sending Mr. Red a small smile. Well, some stuff happened in my life. Then one day, I woke up, and I just didn't feel motivated to write anymore. I couldn't think of anything. Not even my old writing prompt journal helped me. It was like I was stuck, and it's been that way for a while now. I shrug, keeping my eyes on my fingers. It feels odd to confide in a stranger, but also nice, in a way. He's easy to talk to. Have you tried writing anything recently? Mr. Red asks. I look up at him, feeling exasperated. Did you not hear what I said? I haven't been able to write in a long time. But have you tried recently? If it's something you're passionate about, why did you just lay back and accept it was disappearing? Mr. Red counters concern in his eyes, which I find odd considering we just met each other. Maybe he's just that kind of person. No, I admit after a moment. I haven't tried. There's nothing else I could do but lie back. That's not true. We all choose whether or not we fight for what we care about. Do you want to start writing again? Mr. Red looks me directly in the eyes. Of course. It's all I've wanted for so long. But I can't find the inspiration anymore. I don't have any new ideas. I've tried so many different methods to find ideas again, but nothing ever comes to me. Look around. There's inspiration all over. All you have to do is lie back and watch or listen. I'm not a writer, but I've been told that inspiration can come from places not even we can expect. Mr. Red smiles at me and I find myself smiling back. He's such a kind person. He knows nothing about me. He's giving me a pep talk about pursuing my passions. He seems to have come here to be alone, but quickly shoved that aside to let me sit and talk with him. I don't think I've ever met someone quite like him before. He would make an admirable character in a movie. Maybe the love interest type or a reliable friend. He seems like he could be one. It's almost sad that I'll probably never see him again if he chooses not to return. It's like a bad rom-com. A girl meets a great guy without knowing if she'll ever see him again, but maybe they'll meet months later. Perhaps while she's out doing something simple like shopping, or even better, while on a secret mission. She finds out the man she's fallen for works for the enemy. She's torn between taking him out forever or on a date. My heart stutters, my eyes widen, and a gasp leaves my lips. Oh, oh my god. What's wrong? Mr. Red immediately asks his body tensing up. I, I got it. I got an idea. I have to go. I briefly stand and run upstairs, but stop. Thank you. This is the first idea I've had in a, such a long time. You're an amazing guy. I, thank you. I give my best genuine smile, my heart still fluttering in excitement, my brain racing with the plot forming. Mr. Red laughs with a bright smile. I'm glad to be of help. Can I read whatever you start writing if I stop by again soon? I would like that a lot, I grin. Thank you again. I hope you enjoy the rest of your burger. See you around. I frantically rave as I rush past Jay to the back stairs. Where are you going? Jay calls watching me go. To write! I yell back as I happily bound up the stairs.